Hi, Devin from Decon here, and this is the Flex 14 from Lenovo. It's an entry-level 2-in-1 convertible laptop that's a part of Lenovo's IdeaPad line. And by a 2-in-1 laptop, I mean it's able to convert from your traditional laptop to a tablet in a matter of seconds. And it's actually able to take on a third form if you put it into tent mode. The Flex only comes in one color option, and it's this space grayish black looking color, which Lenovo calls their Onyx Black. And the top lid itself has a very grippy, almost rubberized feel to it. The flex is constructed from plastic and there is some minimal flex here, but overall it feels extremely sturdy. The lid requires two hands to open and the hinge feels extremely nice as it can rotate up to around 350 degrees. The display itself is a glossy 14 inch touch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Color accuracy on this panel isn't great and it's average for this price point. And despite these inaccuracies, the panel overall looks very, very nice during average use. Colors appear accurate and are nice and vibrant, and contrast overall is pretty good as well. When viewing at an angle, the glossy coating really rears its ugly head here as reflections can be seen almost instantly, and this kind of disrupts the overall viewing experience. The bezels surrounding the display aren't overly thick and they actually look pretty nice for this price point. There is a rather large chin here, and as unesthetically pleasing as it is, it actually serves a purpose when you're in tablet mode, as it gives you a place to actually grip the laptop. Okay, let's move on to the keyboard real quick, because, spoiler alert, it's awesome. Lenovo has been known for making some of the best keyboards on the Windows side of things for a while now, and the Flex is no different. Overall, the layout is close to perfect, but I do have a few nitpicks. The first one being the right control key. It's actually the same size and shape as that left arrow key, and even after a few weeks of use, I keep hitting that arrow key instead of that right control key, and it's just something I haven't adjusted to quite yet. My second issue is the brightness function key itself. And my main issue is with the location itself. Normally the brightness keys are found on the row of function keys at the top of the keyboard, but for some reason Lenovo put the brightness function on the spacebar. And it's not that it's hard to use, it may just be a bit difficult to find for the average consumer. And while having a backlit keyboard is always welcomed, there is only two levels of adjustment here. Key travel isn't very deep and the keystroke itself is fairly soft, and the deck itself is nice and sturdy, and this all culminates for a very nice typing experience. The keys aren't clicky at all, which I personally don't love, but this makes it a perfect option for an office or classroom setting. The trackpad is excellent, it's a Windows Precision trackpad and it's smooth to the touch. I experienced zero drifting and it never activated while typing, and the click mechanism isn't too deep, and much like the keyboard, it produces a nice soft click. And just adjacent the trackpad, we have a fingerprint reader for Windows Hello, and it works extremely well as it activated 9 times out of 10 on my first attempt. We have stereo speakers located on the bottom of the laptop, and while normally I don't love this positioning, it actually makes sense here as they've essentially become front-firing speakers when you put the laptop into tent mode. Overall, sound quality was surprisingly pretty good. While there's no low end to speak of, highs and mids are above average for a laptop, and it does get pretty loud as well. Looking at the bottom of the laptop, we can see 10 screws are holding that bottom case in place. Once you remove these screws and carefully pry around the keyboard, we can remove this bottom case and access the internals. We immediately see we have some upgradability options here as both the RAM and solid state drive are removable. Alright, spec sheet time. Near the top of the motherboard, we have our Ryzen 5 3500U processor, and this is a 2.1GHz quad core processor. It also has AMD's Vega 8 graphics built in. Just below the processor we have 12GB of RAM, 4GB of which is soldered onto the motherboard, and the remaining 8GB is a single module. And in the bottom right corner we have our M.2 solid state drive. This particular model came with 256GB installed. And just adjacent our solid state drive we have a 44 watt hour battery. Alright, let's look at the processor real quick. The Flex comes in a few different configuration options, and the baseline model actually comes with a Pentium Gold processor, which I'm not even going to consider here because it has a few shortcomings, with the biggest one being a lower resolution display. So I'm just going to focus on these two options here. We have our AMD Ryzen 5 3500U processor, and we also have Intel's i7-8565U processor. Both are quad-core processors and are very impressive. Regardless of which one you do end up getting, they're going to handle your normal day-to-day -day use just fine. And they should be able to handle some light photo editing, but I wouldn't do anything more intensive than that as the built-in graphics are pretty limited. But this laptop wasn't made for professional use. The main draw for this laptop is its ability to go into tablet mode. So when you're in the classroom or a meeting, this allows you to switch from typing to note-taking almost instantly. And it actually comes with a pen in the box, which is a big plus. And the experience is exceptional and close to my Surface Pro in terms of responsiveness. I'm by no means an artist, so I can 
cannot speak to creating photorealistic art. However, when I was creating my art, I had zero issues having the pen do what I wanted it to do. I did notice the cursor jumping around as my pen came close to the screen, but once my pen actually came in contact with the screen, it was a non-issue as it detected where it was and it made an accurate stroke every time. While drawing, palm rejection was great and it never actually interfered with my drawing, However, at times it would grab my entire screen and move it over, which would cause me to stop and reposition the screen back to where I was working. Even writing in cursive was a non-issue as it still looked like my usual childlike sloppiness. Battery life on the Lenovo Flex was rather disappointing as I was only able to get around 6 hours at minimum brightness and just over 5.5 hours at maximum brightness. Total recharge time was pretty quick as it was an hour and 45 minutes. Port selection is perfect however as we have our proprietary charging port an HDMI port, a headphone jack, and a USB Type-C port on the left hand side. And on the opposite side we have two USB 3.0 ports and a full size SD card slot. I honestly have zero issues with the Lenovo Flex. In terms of value, it is excellent and it provides a stellar laptop experience as the touchscreen is great, the keyboard is so nice, the trackpad is excellent, and the internals are impressive as well. Its responsiveness when drawing and its ability to annotate are both near surface levels of greatness. I have zero issues recommending this right now, but when the fourth generation Ryzen chips finally do get implemented, it's going to become a must buy. Well, it's been nice. If you enjoyed this video, send me your likes. If you enjoy my content, send me your subs. I'll see you next time.